Hey everyone, welcome back. Thatcher from the Battlefront Bros with a new style of video. We wanted to discuss today some of the aspects of Battlefront 2 that we think should have been in the game and what we would want to see for a Battlefront 3 game as EA has said they want to put more effort into Star Wars games and Battlefront 3 would be the best choice for them moving forward. EA has dropped some minor hints that there would be a possible new large Star Wars game coming within the next three years and they would be insane not to capitalize on the following that Battlefront 2 has amassed. Hopefully EA has realized the potential that Star Wars games have with the huge comeback of Battlefront 2 and the massive success of a single player Star Wars game like Jedi Fallen Order. Battlefront 3 could build on and further the success that the past two Star Wars games have created. With Squadrons coming out soon, now is the perfect time to start building the next step in the Battlefront franchise. Blake and I being veterans of the Star Wars games and franchise thought about some great ideas that we think could really bring in a lot of players from past games and even some fresh new faces. Currently the reception of the sequels and the new Star Wars movies has been lackluster at best and people just aren't really excited about that entire storyline. Looking back on the Clone Wars and the prequels, there's a lot of potential for untouched content via storylines and even new faces. Firstly, the new Battlefront 3 should continue the tradition of having a solid single player storyline, but overall focusing on the multiplayer content that keeps the game going for years on end. These two staples of the Battlefront games have kept fans excited for new content yet also satisfied with a solid single player, and they should continue this tradition. Diving right into it, we wanted to talk about the endless single player possibilities first. As Blake and I have both agreed, having the main portion of the game focused on the Clone Wars era provides countless opportunities for engaging and riveting single player. There are three main storylines that we have thought about that could make for excellent single player stories. The first one we want to discuss is my personal favorite, following Ahsoka Tano. Many Star Wars fans have a special place in their heart for the apprentice of Anakin Skywalker and following her story from a Padawan up until Order 66 being able to play as her the entire way would bring back a lot of memories for fans of the Clone Wars series. The game could start players training as a youngling Ahsoka, guiding new players through the basics of combat and showing off her force abilities. This could transition into the player, through Ahsoka's perspective, meeting Anakin Skywalker for the first time, giving us a look into something we have never seen before. We could then follow Ahsoka along her adventures, possibly some that were showcased in the Clone Wars TV show, but even some material that we have never seen before including new missions to unheard of planets. Another amazing aspect about basing this game in the Clone Wars and following Ahsoka is that there is the potential to play as Anakin, Obi-Wan, and even a few other Jedis throughout the Clone Wars showcasing their different force abilities and fighting styles. Much like the campaign of Battlefront 2, being able to play as Luke, Leia, and many other heroes, this would add variety and intrigue to the game and keep it fresh. We could follow a mission with Mace Windu, go on an adventure with Yoda, and fight side by side with Anakin and Obi-Wan. Throughout the campaign, you could unlock new force abilities and power Hours and upgrade your abilities. There could even be a mission where you play as Rex and fight side by side with Anakin or go off on your own mission. As the Clone Wars spanned over three years, there are numerous possibilities for battles and side missions. I think this avenue for a single player game would provide a lot of nostalgia for Star Wars fans that have been less than enthusiastic about the new direction of the films. As Blake and I have seen online, a majority of players would be excited for a return of this time period, and we both have a soft spot for it in our hearts. The game could even culminate in the duel between Ahsoka and Maul in the Clone Wars, or Anakin and Obi-Wan fighting on Mustafar. Then, as EA continued the support for the game, they could expand to a DLC with the original trilogy characters at the forefront. The second option, probably the most complicated but interesting option, could be a single player storyline following your own created Jedi. You could customize, name, and create your own Jedi to go on never before seen missions as you fight your way through the Clone Wars. Again, the start of your journey could begin as a young at the Jedi Temple, training to become a full-fledged master. As there were approximately 10,000 Jedi during the Clone Wars, it is conceivable that there would be many Jedi out there unknown to canon. This option does take the most leeway with Jedi lore and does push the bounds of what is known to Star Wars fans, but it does offer the most customizable and personal experience. As you play through battles and missions with your own created character, you could upgrade force abilities and discover new entirely custom powers. I think a linear campaign would suit Battlefront 3 as 
as it has in the past, and save an open world Star Wars game for another time. You could even end up facing Dooku or Grievous in combat, having them escape as you would obviously not kill them. There is even the possibility of facing Palpatine with lightsabers in a dream sequence or force vision. As you can see, this option for a Battlefront 3 storyline could provide insane customization options and make the game feel a lot more personal and like it's your own. There could be numerous cosmetic customization options, such as countless races to choose from, different lightsaber colors, different outfits you could unlock throughout the campaign, and much more. The options are really limitless, but the downside is this could take a lot of extra time and development to make as it could honestly be its own game. The single player could get as expansive as they wanted, or they could shorten it to allow for the development of an even more in-depth multiplayer. I personally really like this concept as it gives the gamer full control over playstyle and customization, something that we haven't seen in a Star Wars game in a long time, if ever. There is also a lot of leeway with story beats as they could introduce new planets, missions, and battles to play through, or revisit some things we have already seen in the Clone Wars TV show or the movies. It could also provide a mix of both new content and battles we have already seen. The third and final multiplayer option could be a very interesting and heartfelt story about the real heroes of the Clone Wars, the clones themselves. EA could take the path of following one specific clone throughout the Clone Wars through battles, missions, and danger. The beginning could start with a training on Kamino, going through obstacle courses, target practice, and battle training. I think a great launching off point from there could be the Battle of Kamino, bringing the fight to you as a young clone and throwing you into danger almost immediately. They could even have the option of having you face off against Grievous during the attack on Kamino and barely escaping with your life. There you run into and help Obi-Wan fend him off, prove your prowess in battle, and get called up for a special assignment. From there, you could join a special task force of elite clones traveling around the galaxy, going from mission to mission, working alongside different Jedi and participating in plenty of battles and special ops. The missions could vary from stealth, sniper, full-scale battle, and small skirmishes to add variety to the single-player campaign. The aspect that I really like about this option is the potential to have a campaign based around the people that often get over looked. There could be real heart and intrigue built around the fact that you could fight alongside your identical brothers and build a bond through battle. They could tug at your heartstrings by introducing you to your special ops commander, making him the most badass mentor in the galaxy, and then having him sacrifice himself against General Grievous or Dooku so that the rest of the squad can escape. You then become leader of the, your special ops unit and can fully customize the look of your squad's armor and even choose from different weapon classes and equipment. There could even be different skins for different weapons and upgrades for each individual weapon. As we said before, how far into customization they go is up to the game developers and how much they can accomplish, but if they put the time and resources towards it, they can make it a really amazing single player. Now on to the other half of this discussion, the multiplayer. There are multiple ways they could go with multiplayer and even more modes that they could introduce. A staple of many of the Battlefront games and a mode that they definitely need to include would be Heroes vs Villains. This is a consistently popular and fun mode that combines blaster heroes with lightsaber heroes in 4v4 combat. HVV is always fun and it would be great to start out the launch of the game with Clone Wars characters we have never played before, such as Ahsoka, Mace Windu, and Asajj Ventress. Each of these characters could have their own unique ability set and you could use each of the powers to counter the enemy. Like in previous Battlefront games, each hero and each villain would have their counterpart to balance the game and the mode. Ahsoka could have Ventress, Mace Windu could have Palpatine with lightsabers, Rex could have Cad Bane, and so on. This would be a great mode as we have already enjoyed it so much in previous games. Onto something a little different with the number of Jedi and Sith that will most likely be in this game due to the era. We would love to see a mode similar to HVV but with sabers only. Only. They could call this mode duels. This could be a 3v3 mode or even a 1v1 mode where the emphasis is on lightsaber dueling. Far too long, people have been having intense lightsaber battles just to have a boba fly in and ruin the 1v1. Adding a mode that puts the emphasis on lightsaber combat would be a really interesting and fun addition to the game. Another interesting change they could make to this mode if they went the route of having 1v1s is they can make it a free-for-all with the selecting of heroes, meaning you could have Anakin and Obi-Wan fighting, Dooku and Grievous battling it out and choose your matchup however you like regardless of whether they are on the same side or not. This would allow for some insanely iconic duels and add a lot more fun and variety. I would have loved the option in Battlefront 2 to go up against Blake as Obi-Wan and really see who is truly more skilled once and for all. This could be enticing as well as you could pit the same characters against each other for a truly even playing field. 
The next mode we would like to discuss is a familiar one, but we would like to add some major changes to it to add more variety and fun. Capital Supremacy has been the staple of the Battlefront games for many years now, but in the most recent installment of it, we felt there was some significant stuff lacking from the mode. For our version of Capital Supremacy, we think the scale should be raised from 20v20 to a much bigger 40v40. This would make the battles feel a lot more populated and engaging. A larger scale would also allow for all the changes we think they should make. If you have ever played Battlefront, Battlefield 4, a lot of these changes are going to sound familiar to you. Instead of having two phases where there is a conquest on the ground and then a second phase where you go to the enemy ship, both phases should be happening at once. On the ground you have five command posts to capture and hold. You and your enemy both have a cruiser hovering a short distance above the ground and each team has fighters and troop transports that can engage in air combat. As you hold these command posts, each one has air defenses that continuously fire on the enemy cruiser. Each cruiser has a health bar status that goes down as the air defenses fire upon it frequently. Once the cruiser health has gone down to zero, you can board the enemy cruiser and try to destroy the reactor cores inside. You win the game when you have destroyed the enemy cruiser from within. This game mode would be an absolute blast as it really feels like a real space battle. If you are more interested in fighting on the ground and capturing command posts, you can hold those command posts constantly doing damage to your enemy's cruiser. If you are a fan of space combat, you can hold the skies and try doing damage to the enemy cruiser from above. This mode would allow for every single playstyle to be put to use and create extremely fun game scenarios. After you have captured a few of the command posts on the ground, your friend could swoop down in an LAT gunship, picking up you and a few friends to engage engage in combat in the skies. After clearing a path to the enemy cruiser, you make a crash landing inside the ship, fighting your way towards the reactor cores, ultimately destroying the ship from within. The extra troops and bigger scale of this mode would really allow for larger maps and more interesting gameplay as you could have entire squads fighting to keep one command post while the rest of your team commands the skies. If your team focuses only on the ground or only on the battles in the skies, the enemy team could take advantage by dominating the other field. Winning this game mode would take strategy, teamwork, and would no doubt be an absolute blast to play. Like the supremacy in Battlefront 2, if you gained enough points through kills, capturing command posts, and damaging the enemy cruisers, you would be able to unlock better reinforcements, tanks, fighters, and even heroes to aid in your fight. This game mode is a must-have, and if Battlefront 3 does end up being made, it would be what Blake and I are looking forward to the most. On to some of the more classic Battlefront modes. For fans of the blaster combat and no hero modes, they should implement a mode similar to Team Deathmatch, with 10 people on both sides, racing to get a specific number of kills. Getting enough points would allow for you to play as certain reinforcements, but heroes would not be in this mode. They could also implement similar modes to Blast and Strike, where non-hero troops fight over an objective or goal to win the game. Having these modes in the game would be nice, as some people do not enjoy the hero combat aspect of these games. With squadrons coming out soon, the developers could either leave out a Starfighter mode or implement squadrons somehow into Battlefront 3. There are definitely a few more modes that they could add if they wanted to, but for now that seems like a good base game. The final topic about multiplayer we want to discuss is what heroes we want to see in the game. The first hero that we want to talk about was a hero long awaited in Battlefront 2. Ahsoka. Many a time we heard that Ahsoka was coming to the game only to be ultimately disappointed in the end with no hope in sight for her to come to the game. EA could make up for this by making her center stage in Battlefront 3. The system that Battlefront 2 used for heroes with three abilities was a great one and I think that they should continue on with this method. For Ahsoka's first ability, she should have a force push. She is seen using this ability many times in the Clone Wars and I believe it would fit her fighting style very well. Much like Luke in Battlefront 2, she would be able to use this force push mid-air to allow for more mobility. The next ability she should have is a jump slam. This ability would allow her to jump high into the air, slamming both of her lightsabers into the ground, causing a force push outwards all around her. This would be a great ability to clear rooms or large areas with lots of troops. Ahsoka's last ability could be very similar to Maul's dash ability in Battlefront 2 as she dashes quickly forward spinning both of her lightsabers. The villain that would counter Ahsoka would be none other than Asajj Ventress. As in the Clone Wars, she would be the perfect counter for Ahsoka. The first ability that Ventress should have would be a force choke throw, similar to Maul in Battlefront 2. This would allow for her to do a small amount of damage while also throwing opponents away from her. The next ability she would have have would be an interesting and new addition never seen before in a Battlefront game. Ventress would take both of her lightsabers and spin around in a circle while also being able to move slowly in any direction, allowing her to take out many opponents
opponents with one move. This ability could also have a small knockback for anyone not killed by it. The third and final ability Ventress should have would be a stealth ability. As she is a skilled assassin and raised by the Knight Sisters, she could mark a target for death while also allowing herself to become much harder to see or impossible to track on radar. Other heroes we would like to see in Battlefront 3 are Mace Windu, Palpatine, Anakin, Dooku, Obi-Wan, Maul, Qui-Gon, Savage Opress, Rex, Cad Bane, and many more in later updates. For now, we just wanted to discuss two hero ability sets, but if you would like to hear all of our ideas for each hero, comment down below and we will make another video on it. Thank you guys so much for sticking around to the end. We really hope that EA sees the huge potential that Battlefront 3 could have and that they invest in this game and make it a reality. I would be hugely disappointed if they didn't make this game, but they have put out an official statement that they will be making more large Star Wars games, so hopefully this is one of them. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell as Squadrons will be coming out on October 2nd and we will be doing a full walkthrough on the campaign, so you'll definitely want to see that. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, may the Force be with you.